manager for Jungle Brothers slash DJ slash uh, take out the garbage slash show up at the studio. So it was more than just tour managing. And then the Jungle Brothers led me to meeting Tribe Called Quest, Q-Tip and Ali, Fife and those guys, and then De La Soul. And that actually led to Lior uh, looking for me via the fact that we had all these groups popping, we were traveling all around the world, and he wasn't a part of it. So, um, Lior and came looking, and also Lior was a big fan of Criminal Minded and Boogie Down Productions, and I was running with Scott LaRock and those guys, and Scott was a good friend of mine, so he wanted to just know anybody that was part of the whole Criminal Minded movement and the whole Boogie Down Production movement, so we wound up uh, getting together and talking about being part of Rush. My first real uh, meeting with Leo didn't go that great because um, I was taken back by Lior. I was like, who's this big, tall Israeli guy? And then he uh, relied on Russell for the pitch when the, it should have just been Leo pitching because Russell was in a space age mode. He was at Club Nell's. It was wild, wild stuff going on. And I was like, this is the guy that started Def Jam Run DMC, I'm gonna go hang out with Leo. And that's how I started at Rush. I started in 1989 at Rush Management, so that was early, early. And no one really cared about uh, rap in general. People thought it was gonna be a fad in and out, and that Leo, Chris, Russell, all these guys would be selling newspapers next week, and be out the game and who cared about Eric B and Rakim and Public Enemy. You know, Leo was very adamant that it was always about the artists and it was about their creative flow and their creativity and that we had to harness their ability to make this great music and take it to new boundaries. And there was really no rules. If we dropped the ball, we were the only ones there to pick it up. So we would quickly rush to pick it up because we never wanted to make a mistake for the artists. Oh, when I was at Rush Management, I was working on everything from Big Daddy Kane to Public Enemy, uh, Brand Nubians, uh, De La Soul, of course, Tribe Called Quest, um, on and on and on. I could go on for days. I mean, I was, had the privilege to Eric B and Rakim. I had the privilege to work with some really great artists back then, you know, and um, fortunately, I came in at the right time. Uh, going back to when I started Violator. Violator was really started as a company, I would say, as soon as I started managing Jungle Brothers and Tribe and everything, but my learning curve was under rush. But I think the focus of Violator really came into effect when around 92, 93, when Leo came in the office and said, we're closing down rush, pick who you want, do whatever you want, follow me to Def Jam. We're gonna go around the corner and uh, we're moving from 298 Elizabeth to 160 Varick, no more rush, it's a wrap. Do what you gotta do, shut this baby down. When you worked at Rush and Def Jam, you, you didn't have titles, you didn't have uh, the, I guess, the, you didn't have the ability to have an ego and be successful, not around Leo. And if you were smart, you would just suck up all the information around Leo because Leo doesn't read. And I hope Leo sees this, because yes, he doesn't read. If you're smart, you read everything on his desk and then he'll want you to transcribe it back to him. But his brain works much quicker and much faster than most executives out there. He's able to translate the information that he gets in a different way than I would say I translated or Russell. Russell definitely doesn't read. I mean, it got to the point when we moved to 160 Varick, Russell didn't even have an office at Def Jam. But it gave Russell the latitude to go do Fat Farm and Rush uh, Def Comedy Jam, rather. And those are the things that kept us hot when the label was cold. We closed Rush Management down. I keep brand newbians. 
uh, lead, I actually keep brand new bands, Tribe Called Quest, Busta Rhymes, because I didn't want to deal with leaders in middle school. I was like, just Busta Rhymes. Um, and this was a great time because I actually had the opportunity to pick from the greatness of Rush Management and say, these are the artists that I know and love and want to work with. So, you know, we were able to have some really great artists at the beginning of Violator after the Rush era ended. 